Hi everyone, thank you for joining me in another video. I'm Ash, you'll know me as Brahma18, and if you're new to this series, this is our FIFA 22 Custom Tactics series, where I show you how to recreate real tactics in FIFA 22. It's never a promise that you'll win every game, but what it is a promise of is that this tactic will be recreated as accurately and as lifelike as possible, so that it can perform as closely to its real life counterpart. Today, we are focusing on Graham Potter's Brighton tactics. It's been highly requested as of recording this. It is the most suggested tactic that you guys want to see because, of course, they're overachieving. They're doing very well. They've been extremely impressive. So today we're going to go into it. If you are new to the series, what we do is I'll show you any position changes and then we'll go into the tactics and I'll talk about what they do there. It's important that, to note that I'm not just going to show you what they do. I also want to give you some context as to what they do so you, you can see the research and, and the accuracy that has gone into this. We'll also talk about player instructions as well, and I'll show you any sort of uh, changes that you need to make there. Two quick notices, very quick notices before we do get into it, and then I promise I'll stop rambling about this. Uh, one, we are currently doing a realistic Borussia Dortmund career mode series on the channel, going really well so far. We're a few episodes into that, so go and check that out if you haven't done so already after you've watched this video, and make sure to subscribe so that you see every time I upload. Also, we are starting Football Manager 2022 videos on my second channel Brahma Ball. We are also going to be doing these sort of videos on there for Fifth Football Manager. So we're going to be recreating real tactics in FM um, and also we're going to be doing various other videos as well. So make sure to go and check out my second channel as well and give that a subscribe. On that note, let me get into the tactics. So then, what do we have with Graham Potter's Brighton tactics? Well, we are looking at the 3 4 one, two tactic today. Occasionally, he shifted it around a little bit. We actually saw them play a 4 4 2 against, I think it was Leicester or a 4 4 one, one. Um, He has sort of tinkered around a little bit, but generally, this is the tactic that they use, the formation and the setup. So that's the one we are focusing on. So what you want to do is you want to go for the 3 4 one, two, uh, tactic that you'll find with the formation, but you're actually going to move the fullbacks up to right and left midfield. And the reason being is that it only gets them further forward, and you'll notice they'll play a more advanced role. Also, what it does is when you're playing out from the back, they will get further forward, but that's more important because what you find is when they're wing backs, they're going to be coming deeper, and it's a little bit harder to play out from the back. What these really active, aggressive free back systems do that are very successful, whether it be Tuchel, whether it be Conti, there's a whole range of managers who do it, is the wing backs will get very high when in possession and what it does is it forces the opposition wingers or wing backs to actively drop back and mark them otherwise they're going to leave them free and you can dink it over to them so it's also going to do that as well don't worry about them not tracking back we'll make sure that we do set the player instructions so that they'll bed in and form a back five when they need to um, also it's worth bearing in mind that these two central midfielders are not dms what we've done in the past in other formations is that we've changed them to right and left defensive midfield this time they are right central midfielder and left central midfielder and what that is going to do is it's going to mean they're going to get a little bit further forward which helps you in the attacking phase of the game when you're in the opposition's half you're going to find that they're getting a little bit further forward they're supporting those attacking movements easier to recycle possession in the upper third as well now obviously it does mean there's slightly less protection at the back what you'll find is that they don't track back as much as a defensive midfielder they're not as deep naturally so that is something that you are going to have to sort of i guess relinquish um you know that sort of protection um, and you're going to have to sacrifice that but the fact that you've got three center backs is going to give you that little bit more protection so that's what they're going to do so then let me talk to you about the tactics uh, with Pot Graham Potter's uh, Brighton side, we've seen them be very entertaining, very aggressive, in not just in the way they press, but the way they play, full stop. There is an emphasis on that vertical kind of passing and style, and it's something that people have been drawn to and been really impressed with the way um, that they're playing with the resources they have at their disposal. So first things first, defensively. We have press after possession loss. So we need to get that counter press when they need to. Not going to press all the time. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in a minute when we come on to the depth. Uh, but with the width, we have this on 20. You want them compact. Um, you want to make sure they are narrow. You don't have to be quite as narrow 
was what we have done in the past because it's a free back, which means that players are going to be able to get out a little bit more. Someone did raise a comment on one of my tactics videos recently saying, why can't we boost the width because it means that you, you get exploited down the sides. That's fine because the opposition can't score from the side. You know, if an opposition player has it near the touchline on either side, they can't, that's not dangerous to you. They have to come inside in order to score unless there's some sort of freak goal. So as a result, you know, let them, let them have the space on the sides. Let them have all, all the room. Let them get the ball. You know, what are they going to do? At some point, they've got to bring it in centrally. So do worth bearing that in mind. Now with the depth, playing on to the counter press as well. Obviously, it's a little bit harder um, to press when your your defensive line is a little bit more in a mid block, but the counter press will happen regardless of where your defensive line is. So we are able to actually drop this down a little bit, and the reason why we do it is because in this system you've got Shane Duffy and you've got uh, Lewis Dunk, who are extremely slow, and on this game. It is just a recipe for disaster. So when I was tinkering with this and trying to work this out, the best way I found is to drop this down to 60. And it's a little bit closer to a mid block, but not quite as passive. Um, so you are still going to have the opportunity, but it's going to drop them off a bit. And you really do need that because Dunk and Duffy get exploited very easily. Ideally, what you would like is to be able to, you know, you could have Dunk in the centre, that's fine. Uh, but then you'd have faster centre-backs on the outside. And they can offer him that protection, uh, particularly against wingers as well. So, offensively, we've got slow build-up. And that's what's going to give you the emphasis on being able to play out from the back. Players showing for the ball at goal kicks, for example. Coming short. Um, we'll talk about it more in the instructions as well. Um, but we are going to be able to do that. The fact that they also play free at the back, again, enables them to more effectively do that because you've got more options. There's less responsibility on each player. There's always an option for when you come to a centre-back, you've got two more. You've got a wing-back. You've got central midfielders dropping off. Always options. So it does make it easier for you to play out from the back. Chance creation is on possession. Not as much in the way of forward runs. They're very much, what they look to do is work the ball through the thirds. A lot of clever, intricate movement. It's not as if they're constantly trying to penetrate the opposition's back line. So take that into account as well. You're going to be able to really crowd out those central areas, which is very important. Not only to... Um, sort of supplement your possession based style but also to give space to the wing backs who are going to be looking to really drive into those areas um, and utilize that to their advantage so with the width it's on 50 a perfect balance very nice the fact that we got possession means players are going to come a little bit shorter but with it on 50 it means that because you've got a quite a narrow formation in the sense that you've only got wing backs and that's it no wingers um, to support them um, it means that it's going to stretch the play a little bit. And that's what you want. You've got a lot of central areas. You've got two central strikers. You've got three midfielders and the three centre-backs. This enables you to stretch it out a little bit. And that's really, really handy because it gives you a bit of versatility and enables you to not only create space, but also affect the opposition in multiple different ways. Players in the box is up to six, and that means you're going to get three. So roughly, it's going to be the two strikers and either maybe an attacking midfielder or one of the wing backs will sometimes, um, you know, really come to the forefront. With, let's say, for example, if you've been looking at the gameplay, um, you'll see Mark Cucciarella. Um, really having a field day. He actually scores both of our goals, um, which in itself is pretty crazy. He was absolutely loving it. Um, so yeah, worth bearing that in mind, you're going to have three attackers into the box there. And finally, with corners and free kicks, both of these are on four. It's going to mean that you can have two players back, one on the edge of the area, and the rest of the players are in as well. So let's move on to the player instructions then. Um, starting off with Sanchez. We have him on comes for crosses. And he's very much that modern um, forward-thinking keeper of trying to, to take the responsibility, relieve pressure off his defenders. Um, so he's going to come to crosses and give you uh, a little bit of help in that area. But with saving outside the box, it's unbalanced. Because, because the line is a little bit deeper, he doesn't need to sweep as much. Also, you don't notice him doing that as much. So it's only really going to do it when there's a clear opportunity to do so and come out with the ball. Other than that, he's going to stay put. With the three centre-backs, nothing to change here at all. So you're all right there. You can move on. Um, but just hopefully, as I spoke about earlier, maybe try and get centre-backs with a little bit more pace. 
on to the wing backs. Both of these do actually have the same role. Um, also worth mentioning that as of recording this, Tariq Lamptey hasn't really been playing. That's because he's still coming back from injury. They're still trying to get him back to fitness. It has been Joel Veltman. But listen, we all know that once Lamptey is fully fit, they are playing him because this guy is criminally underrated and he's going to be a very, very good wing back in the future. So we have gone with him. Now, as I said, both players on the same roles. First things first, come back on defence. That's what we spoke about earlier when we talked about how they're going to bed back into the back five when they need to, when you're out of possession. That's very, very important. Make sure they're tracking back. Chance creation is on stay wide. Get them on the touch lines. Make them create that width and get it out to them as much as possible. And then you go from there. Lots of players running in and around them and showing the options. But they are still a big big part of the way in which they want to build up so make sure you've got that on stay wide with support runs it's on balance and the reason why it's on balance is yes sometimes you want them penetrating the opposition in behind um, because as you we've already seen that in the gameplay if you've you've had a look you've seen Cucciarella getting behind a couple of times really have some fun about that you've got pace as well with the likes of Lamptey although his pace is underrated on this game so sometimes you want to do that and it gives them that active mentality but in other instances you also want them to drop off and make it easier for you to play out from the back as well they're going to do a bit of both that's very important so i found balance to be the best way to replicate the way in which that they do do it so what about support on crosses finally both of these are on getting to the box for the cross however worth bearing in mind is that because in the tactics we only had three players getting into the box that will also have an effect so we've got it on getting to the box to make sure that when the opportunity is there, that they will do it. So on to the central midfielders then next. Well, these guys are actually both on the same uh, instructions. So first things first, we've got them both on stay back while attacking and also stay on the edge of the box for crosses as well. As we've just spoke about with the wing backs, they're going to be committing, which means these guys, in this case, Murder and Pascal Gross, um, we need them to offer that protection. Um, and it's going to enable you um, to really filter in when they need to and when the the wing backs have gone forward in addition to that it also means that they can recycle possession better and more effectively uh, because these guys are hovering around in sort of that mid range i guess the the upper part of that sort of mid third in the pitch and so you're going to be able to re to really recycle possession well um, because when say the opposition are able to clear the ball get it away all you need to just start the attack again it's going to be resting on these guys and they can do that very very well with the positioning freedom, both of these guys are both actually on free roam. You want them dropping into the spaces, again playing this role of that, enabling you to recycle possession. These guys are always going to be uh, showing for the pass and that is extremely important. You're going to need a lot of movement in the middle because it's going to be a bit crowded with not just your players but the opposition players as well. Um, so you need these guys trying to find every inch of space that they possibly can in order to show for the ball, both in the defensive third and also the attacking third as well finally with defensive position it's on cover center now you might be wondering why is it on cover center when they've only got wing backs and they might need to fill in for them well the reason being is that one the center backs the left and right center back do actually go stay quite wide um when you are in possession so worth bearing that in mind two you only want these guys to be manually dragged out so when you choose to bring them out that's when you do cover center otherwise keep them in the central areas because these guys don't forget either last line of attack you could do it if you had um you know someone deeper and then they were sort of a bit beyond them say like in the clock system that we covered where we had the center defense midfielder covering center and the other two covering wide ahead of him that would be fine but in these cases these guys are the last um you know point of the midfield before you know you're really isolating your center back so we want them on both on cover center and it'll put a bit more responsibility on you manually bringing them out so next up with Lalana, this attacking advanced midfielder. Defensive support is come back on defence to make sure he is tracking back. Support on crosses is balanced. And that's really playing into the whole free in the box. They don't want to commit too many into the box. They like to really offer that, not only show that protection, um, but also work the ball into the box. And that means you're going to have to have players on the outside in the first place. He also does his best work really in those sort of advanced areas, in those pockets of space that you're really going to find so you you don't really look for him to get into the box as much really that's down to, to one of the wing backs to get in there positioning freedom is on free roam and again that's alluding to that sort of um you know emphasis on finding those little pockets of space he's very much going to drift around 
also worth bearing in mind, obviously, with no wingers, um, you know, you're going to need that, that bit more movement in the central areas to really uh, occupy the opposition defenders. Creating that movement is really what's going to help this system to be as successful as possible and what has done with Brighton as well. Lots of movement and picking up those, those little pockets of spaces. We can really talk about that with the strikers next. We'll start off with Trossard in this case. We've got him on drifting wide and again it's that emphasis on movement. You're constantly trying to get the opposition um, you know, to either follow you or you're getting your players into their space. So he's on drift wide, but his attacking runs is mixed because sometimes he's going to drop off. Don't forget, he's partly midfielder, although he does sometimes play up front as well. Um, so sometimes he's going to drop off. Sometimes he'll run in behind. There's a whole range um, of different elements to his arsenal that you can really utilise. Um, with defensive support, he's on basic defence support, so sometimes you can have him tracking back. But with Molpa, on the other hand, things are a little bit different. So let's talk about his instructions next. We've actually got him on balance with the width. You don't want him drifting out wide as much, although occasionally he will do, because he's really going to act as the focal point of this attack. And that's why the attacking runs, you've got him on getting behind. How many times have we seen him running behind um, whilst the other striker drops off? And that's really where the mismatch options come for the opposition. Very much playing on the last man. You're trying to get him into as many goal-scoring positions as possible because that's really where he's at his most effective. And play that into the defensive support as well where he's on stay forward. He's again playing that role of the out-and-out -out striker. He's going to be that out ball. You don't really want him tracking back. You want him in the, as much as far out the pitch as possible really to really do um, you know, his best work and cause the most damage. So that's going to do it then guys for this video. If you've got any questions about the tactic then make sure to let me know in the comment section and I will get back to you. Any suggestions, keep them coming in, although I've got a massive list over there um, of tactics to work my way through. So if you're making a suggestion, it's probably already been made, but still open to any if you want to get them in. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload. Check out my Borussia Dortmund career mode series and also check out my second channel as well where we're going to be doing Football Manager 2022 videos such as tactics recreations and all that good stuff. Check out all the links in the description, such as my link to my Twitter, where you're going to get a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff and added, added content there. And also affiliate links to all of my gear, my custom gaming PC parts, my equipment, consoles, um, games, all that good stuff. It's a great way to support the channel because I do get a little kickback and you don't have to pay more uh, than you already were going to. On that note, we're going to finish off the video there. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I will see you soon.